I'm Cage Warriors lightweight champion George Hardwick and today we'll be looking at one of my favourite fighters in the game today, Rafael Fazeev, but one of his Muay Thai fights before MMA, before the UFC. Looks like it's Patong Stadium, I'm not quite sure, but anyway. Major thing we see in his Muay Thai fights is obviously a difference in stance. He's got that stereotypical light lead leg bounce, helps to check, check low kicks just like that. In MMA, he's got a lot more side to side footwork and that's obviously to make it harder for him to take down. There, he opens up with a lead hook, right cross, into right kick. Very explosive combinations, lots of tempo changes, lots of light bouncing the leg, and hard, fast combinations, using his lead leg, which is one of his main weapons. Again, he's fighting a taller person here. Underrated weapon is that lead leg. I remember one of my coaches trained with the Sichipo twins, both Lumpini champions, and he said, they said use the lead leg lead side a lot against the taller fighter because it doesn't have to cover much distance. There we see the classic combination left hook into right low kick and then a no switch left body kick. That left hook right low kick it's a classic combination because even if they block it it sends their weight onto that lead leg so they can't pick the leg up to check. His opponent hits an inside low kick then he leads with the liver shot. He's hit with the left hook up high a few times and then goes to the liver shot. There he does it in reverse he goes right low kick first and then comes up with a left hook to the head. That's beautiful. It's like if you watch Melvin Manhoff, that's a brilliant example. You can hit it both ways. Left hook, low kick. Uh, left hook into a right low kick or right low kick into left hook. There he's answering back with the low kick. Even if he takes the low kick, he's answering back. Lead hand into right low kick. It's, some, it's super simple stuff. But when it's done that explosively and just out of his stance like that with no telegraph, it, it's just beautiful to watch. So there again. The light-footed Muay Thai kind of stance, bouncing the lead leg. Not as much movement as we see in MMA. He doesn't have to worry about the takedowns. And leading with the hook. He's leading with the hook a lot, which is very difficult to do. It's difficult to lead with the hook, but if you've got the explosiveness and the timing for it, it's a beautiful thing to do. Yet yeah, the obvious risk of that is getting hit with the right hand as you leap in with the lead hook to the head or the body. Think Gunnar Nelson versus Santiago Ponsonibio. Because Gunnar Nelson would jump in with a left hook and got hit with a right cross down the middle. It's very dangerous. But if you've got the speed and the timing, you can do it all day. There, his opponent's trying to use his lead leg. Establishes range. Both ortho orthodox fighters. Trying to use a lead up elbow to try and land a solid shot, but not exchange punches with him. There's the switch kick, the infamous switch kick from Fazeev. He actually gets hit leaning back there. His opponent takes an extra step before throwing the right hand. But there he answers back with the cross hook. So that was the first round. Obviously it's a different pacing than we're used to seeing for Zeev in MMA. Muay Thai pacing. Obviously there's a little bit of a slow acceleration with the general Muay Thai pacing. Hits a left kick. The opponent kind of gets a check to it. And again, left hook, right low kick. One of the most basic combinations. But it works because it sends their weight onto their lead leg. Both loads up the kick and it stops from checking. And again, kind of just caught him on the toes, that one. Beautiful ring generalship from Fazeev. Even though there's not loads of movement, he's just holding the center here. And there he goes low kick without any hook before it. That's something, sometimes you watch a good high-level kickboxing Muay Thai fight and you think he kicked with no setup. The setup was timing the step. As someone steps off to their left, their foot's heavy on the floor. They can't pick it up to check. So it's really good timing. Watch a lot of Masato. There he's managing to get a read on the left hook low kick and his opponent checks. And this light, light footed rhythm, going to look to explode and change tempo, looking for a high kick. And this is a big thing you see, it's, it's something you don't realise in fights, is when you kick people, they're sweaty. And that sweat gets on your feet and it makes you slippy. Especially if it's a, a vinyl like floor covering, this is more canvas, but if you're throwing those push kicks, those head kicks, the, your feet get slippy. You've got to rub them on the floor, so that's why you see them rubbing them on the floor quite a bit. If, if in training sometimes, put a bit of water on your heavy bag and then practice front kicks. Or spar with your tops off and then you realise you've got to wipe your feet a lot of times after that. That's beautiful. Inside low kick to outside low kick to hook cross hook. Just insane creativity with the combos. Like That's something people underestimate with, the cre with creativity is actually using the basics in a creative way. Those are all basic shots just put together in an unpredictable, really exciting way. Push kick there, off the back leg that time. Looks for an overhand, but his opponent gets his lead shoulder up. And circling around, using that push kick. There he goes, body hook, low kick. One of the main weapons he's been using in this fight. Leading with a hook and into a low kick. Super basic, but done explosively, done with perfect timing. 
changing the rhythm when he's landing it, not just being predictable, and no wind-up. There he goes, two shots to the body. Quite rare to see two shots to the body. In the square, like, Muay Thai stance, you can open up a bit more with that. There he goes, jab to the body, low kick. A lot of left-hand low kick. Push kick again, little rub of the feet, and a lead hook. The other guy's got his right hand up here, starting to, starting to get a little bit of time. Not completely successful, but he's starting to check more low kicks or block more left hooks. Again, light foot rhythm. Just misses on a hook cross. See how much distance he can cover with that. Because he's got that explosive base. And there. There's the knockdown. Let's look at it again. It's a jab. Cross to the body. Left hook. So here. Lord no. If he misses this overhand. I might have gone back a little bit much. But no worries. There. He's just a little bit extended. So he's going to extend his combination by one shot. Going to the body first. Jab. Cross to the body, left hook. It's such a beautiful combination. Especially when you're the short fighter going down. See how he kept his posture on the right hand as well. When I show people this combo, the main mistake they do is they'll throw this right hand and their body will lean forward. Their head will go way past their knees. That means you've got no spring in your legs to come up with that left hook. Whereas here, he, he was squatted beautifully, had good posture, bending his knees, bending that lead leg. That allows him to come up with that powerful left hook. Let's watch it one more time. One more time. If it plays. So, he knows his opponent's starting to lead back. lean back. He just needs that little bit of extension, a little bit more range. So he uses an extra shot, extends it from a two-shot combo to a three-shot combo, goes down low, and then up high. Beautiful combination. Absolutely loads to learn from Rafael Fazeev's Muay Thai fights. If you haven't watched his Muay Thai fights, you know, everyone's seen his UFC fights, his lean backs, his switch kicks, his fights with Moicano, his recent fight with Desanos. A lot of people seen this, but go watch his Muay Thai fights because there's absolutely loads to study and just creativity with the basics. Beautiful stuff.